Okay, by the way, that's a story breaking on the screens right now. Our colleague uh, Priya Sheth is picking up those details that it seems the Future Group uh, via Future Retail could get into some sort of an association with uh, 7-Eleven, the uh, Japanese chain. That's some uh, sort of uh, input that uh, is being picked up by our colleagues and it's flashing up on your screen. The stock is also reacting uh, a bit. This is what we know, that uh, this deal will perhaps include a revenue-sharing model as well as a tech-sharing tie-up. Uh, and uh, this could be a franchise agreement uh, for a period of 70 to 80 years. I mean, a real long-term franchise with 7-Eleven. Very popular chain of stores, obviously, all, all over Southeast Asia, uh, in fact. And Future Retail seems to be uh, looking at a tie-up to get them to India as well. Mr. Tulsi, let me actually ask you about the group. I mean, either uh, Future Retail or even Future Consumer. Uh, thoughts on these stocks? See, I think this news of tie-up with 7-Eleven, one has to really understood the broad contours, but 7-Eleven seem to be having the highest number of stores, if I'm not wrong, if you really see the, in, the, in the world, they have about 50 or maybe 60,000 stores, or maybe the outlets, and if that this kind of tie-up happens, that shows the uh, choice of the partner, that the things are not available, and in fact, the retail space is seem to be very much happening in, in hot place in India. And if, if that happens, then obviously future uh, the 7-Eleven will also be seen very aggressive in pushing uh, the, the, the arrangements with, with future groups, which will all be seen quite positive. Because the infrastructure of future retail will be used to push the products of 7-Eleven, which will be giving the extra revenue to future, future retail, and even that will help them to expand their, 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 their retail food for, 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 uh, area, for area also, overall. So yes, seen quite positive for future retail going forward. Okay, well, high time. We have 7-Eleven in India as well, by the way. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on, uh, uh, discuss some more names. Uh, uh, Sudip, uh, uh, I wanted your thoughts on Sun TV. Uh, you know, it's clearly shown signs that uh, things have bottomed out. Uh, uh, even on bad days, the stock does not fall. Today also, it's up about 4%. Uh, your thoughts on the stock? Well, I think uh, we have turned positive after the last results. If you uh, really see what's happening in Sun TV, uh, they have big, uh, they've started gaining market share back uh, uh, what they were losing in the southern markets. They obviously continue to remain undisputed leader in the Tamil market. Uh, apart from that, the new launches which they have uh, in the uh, Bengali uh, segment and the upcoming um, uh, Marathi uh, channel launch, uh, also the OTT investments uh, uh, will definitely yield significant revenue going forward for them. They have one of the best possible libraries, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, we can think of. And I think they have finally woken up to the monetization opportunity of the library and that probably will happen best through the OTT uh, uh, route. Also remember, uh, we are heading into elections and this is a season where uh, the ad revenues go up significantly. Uh, so I think uh, it's it's for good time going forward. It was also beaten down significantly. So even at current level, I think uh, we, have, uh, we have an opportunity of buying Sun TV for about 6 to 12 months hold. Okay, by the way, the stock of this series really has been Tata Motors. Uh, and uh, what Tata Motors has done today is now with today's move, it's filled that entire gap. It's taken Tata Motors so long. Let's now pull out a one-month chart of Tata Motors. Uh, uh, after the results, uh, I think on the result day, it started the move at 182. It, it was at around 182. Uh, on the result day, the opening was at 130. Remember, it, it fell 30% mm, yeah. uh, uh, right at the start. Uh, closed somewhere around 150. Now, uh, that entire one day, it's taken almost 15 or 20 days to wipe out that entire one day's fall, but it's done that today. Yeah. And four and a half percent higher is what you have on Tata Motors. Uh, Mr. Hussain, this is, uh, you know, for Tata Motors, first time in long time that you've seen this kind of move from the lows. Uh, uh, what is the market pricing in? Is the market pricing in that, okay, look, the worst is well and truly over, last quarter was kitchen sinking quarter. Or is this market factoring in something like perhaps, uh, you know, demerging the JLR business or, you know, having a se separate standard on entity? Is, is something like that the market might be factoring in? See, and it's difficult to say whether the kitchen sinking got completed in Q3 or not because it all depends on the accounting treatment also because of the amounts back be getting capitalized by them every quarter and you know then you write off 27,000 crore in just one quarter whether that practice can get repeated maybe four to six quarters down the line I don't know if you if you hive off JLR I don't know whether can you really serve the purpose because I, I have never been on, on the 
or buying this theory of turning around the company by, by having of the loss making divisions which i have been in fact critical for the tata steel also you know where the chorus is seen getting hived off to these and crew on a 50 50 jv so i don't know whether again these things will really work for jlr and even if that happens you know the maybe the tie up with some other automakers or if it is remains stand alone then the entire things will get consolidated in the results of the company but coming on the valuation probably i have seen that sometimes in this recent past the over pessimism or you know sometimes which we have seen in case of many stocks you no know, point in 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 just pointing them out here the correction or maybe the sanity comes back either because of the technical factors or because of the fundamental factors also but one thing has been noticed that every quarter results is seen making the share to correct and then you know recovering again so as to fall again by the time the next results comes in so i won't be surprised to see the share moving back to 200 level or so but again you know see to fall again with the q4 numbers maybe back to 175 180 so if you are a near term or a short term investor then go for the stock but if you are not even advised now at the current level but if you want to be as an investor then remain away because the better choices are available in the form of the maruti and m&m in the pv space and the agree related so things yeah okay all right uh, mr thulsi and we we'll leave it on that note for today thank you very much for joining in and being with us on the show Uh, future retail is on your screen also should check out the price on uh, future consumer basically the the entire basket of stocks from this group has gotten excited on that news uh, future consumer that's retail and consumer is up about 4% i think 3.5% uh, for the time being as well um uh, so you know when we are talking about uh, you know the big pocket of the market that moved uh, you know just a while back So the metals had a very good rally all of last week and at least till yesterday. Today there's some profit taking, uh, profit taking on steel stocks, for instance. What is your view here on a uh, Tata Steel and the likes? Well, I think uh, you know uh, somewhere if you are trying to take a long term view on metals, uh, you need to uh, look at what's happening in China and you know things were not moving uh, in the, in the right direction in China as far as uh, uh, the, the the growth of the economy and the businesses are concerned. So there was a bit of a question mark over the entire metal space in the medium to long term. Uh, things have started looking up in China and we'll have to wait and watch. So I don't think uh, you know we will rush to buy. the metal stocks yes domestic steel business is doing pretty well for most of the established players tata steel jsw all of them uh, but there are pulls and pressures from the global markets which we will have to take into cognizance for these large global uh, kind of steel players so i'll stay away from the metal names at this stage okay your thoughts on uh, tata motors uh, sudeep well i think uh, you know uh, Anuj, the way I look at it, they have missed the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, forget the short-term movements and ups and downs. Uh, they can they go ahead and compete with a Daimler, uh, a BMW, an Audi, or a Tesla? Uh, the 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 new wave of cars where uh, you know they should have been uh, they should have been in that luxury space where all these guys are fighting. Uh, the amount of investment needed for there they haven't done it, mm -hmm. and I think it's become little too late for them to resurrect the JLR. Uh, the 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 more and more they will start losing probably market. Market share vis-a-vis -vis the new players. Yes, the current brands are looking also a little bit dated. Uh, they haven't uh, really invested in R&D to the extent the other peers have done. So I'm a little skeptical. Domestic business definitely is showing signs of recovery, but JLR still constitutes a significant part of the consolidated results. And I'll stay away from Tata Motors. All right. Uh, so they believe it there today. Thanks okay. a lot for joining us. Uh, Ashwini, your thoughts uh, on Tata Motors? Uh, just you know, trying to. Uh, see the the chart here once again because uh, now has filled that entire gap that day it started at you know the previous day's close was 182 to once again let's pull out a one month chart on Tata Motors uh, uh, and uh, it, it's been a, a decent move uh, your thoughts on whether this is indicating some kind of uh, bottoming out process or long term bottoming out process or uh, uh, just a powerful short covering move See the first issue is that it needs to come with some good news. For the moment, let's say it, it can have a pullback to 220, 230. The intermediate bottom may have been made, so you get your 20, 30 point move on the upside. Because where the trouble started, once that zone is taken out, you get into a larger pullback. Overall, I think autos are looking like. Uh, they want some sort of a rally, Madison, Bharat Ford, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So my sense is that maybe you could have a 
another 10 percent on the upside okay by the way the market's turning very volatile uh, so it'll be the last five minutes yeah, the bank nifty has fallen 120 in. points so uh, they're about uh, uh, intraday if just see the nifty and the bank nifty i think even that kotak spike has been used to uh, uh, sell into in that stock uh, hdfc is a stock which is under pressure uh, this is this is and it's across the board on it's yeah. it's in it's being felt in the mid cap space on the nifty on the bank nifty uh, let's just get some of the stocks up on the screen. Yes, Bank is all, all obviously you lower. Know, ICICI Bank yeah. is, is the one that's really exerting downside pressure. I don't know. Maybe, you know, it could be that right now you don't want to take uh, an overnight risk. Uh, you mm. know, you don't want to, you know, uh, what kind of response perhaps we'll have from the other side of the border, from the mm. international community. Perhaps you want to take, you know, gauge that. Uh, you had intraday rally taking money home because it's uh, a bit uncertain. Uh, especially on the bank nifty is uh, rather interesting because the way that fell but uh, anyway let's uh, let's leave it here for now for, yeah. uh, there was a sharp intraday rally but it looks like at least in the last hour there's no further short covering in fact that recovery mm -hmm. is getting sold into once again that's rather stiff sharp drop let's see we've got our eye on it right now uh, welcoming in webhav sangvi co-ceo of vendors capital alternate strategies webhav thanks for joining in so yeah i mean we've had a big day today it's there's a lot of news to digest uh, first and foremost, today's event and this strike, uh, assuming that there is no further uh, escalation or any retaliatory action, uh, do you think this is over and done and in the price? Uh, I mean, or should we still, I mean, will we still be talking about it in the days to come? No, as you rightly mentioned, I mean, if this uh, doesn't continue forward in terms of the, es it doesn't get escalated from here onward. Uh, my sense is basically markets was anticipating this kind of event uh, for the last one one and a half weeks. Uh, having said that, if it's over, then at least the shorter term hangover is uh, out. Uh, what we what needs to be also seen along with this is basically that while uh, this event is out, the regional flows into uh, EM as a basket has been pretty consistent, and because of which, uh, because of the last two weeks of tension, we have underperformed the EM markets uh, considerably. My sense is if the EM market continues to be strong and the ETF flow continues to, continues to be strong, which is the case, uh, we may see some amount of recovery uh, from here on. Okay, it's, it's rather swift. It's, it's not stopping. That's very interesting. If you see the the move on the on the Nifty and the Bank Nifty, uh, uh, okay, so some kind of support now at around the 26,950 mark on the Bank Nifty and around 10,840 on the Nifty, but uh, uh, let's just pull out uh, some more names uh, and see the kind of moves that we are seeing. Uh, uh, okay, a couple of these IT names are also correcting now from the high point. Uh, HCL Tech, for example. And of course, ICICI Bank, like Surabhi mentioned, Infosys as well. Uh, Web, Web of High, good afternoon. So, you know, your thoughts on uh, whether this is a market in which you want to go, you know, into high beta or you want to be with the safety of the, of the boring, uh, you know, HDFC banks of the world. Uh, uh, going forward from here, considering that, you know, the mid-cap market has underperformed so much and was showing signs of life over the last couple of days. No, of course, I mean, see, that's a golden question to ask in the sense that, uh, you know, we did estimate that in the first half of calendar year 2019, uh, things are going to be volatile and because if it's volatile, then uh, the natural tendency is to, uh, you know, to, to be invested towards your safer end of the markets, which is the large caps, very well liquid uh, with high corporate governance. Uh, what, what would be important or uh, what is extremely, uh, I would say, uh, interesting <coughs> to note is basically the, once the uncertainty of the first half gets over, uh, you might see some amount of shift coming back from large caps to mid caps. Again, this is after digestion of the election results and so on and so forth. But we do think that at some point in time, it will be starting to look attractive. But not at this point in time. Let the volatility get over. Let the election get over. Okay. Well, some recovery once again. It's, uh, I mean, 38 points down at one point. Suddenly, we were down 50 points again. And now it's a 38-point drop on the Nifty. So, yes, it is volatile. It's a little um, edgy. One can perhaps say that. Uh, okay, Webhav, then let's talk about, you know, uh, portfolio creation and what kind of stocks you'd look at buying right now. Let me start with some of these, uh, you know, high pedigree, high cost consumer names and whether you would go back and look at buying them. Uh, look at something like a Page Industries. Uh, and then on the other hand, there are stocks like Bata. Again, great numbers and the price just keeps going higher and higher. 
what is it that you're comfortable with now in the consumer basket? I mean, we have, we have consistently maintained that uh, the consumers and an overall basket is something which we like. Uh, always you would have times when you will pick up the right kind of stock at the right price. Uh, and in a, it is extremely difficult to find that purely because the whole universe is, uh, you know, high in terms of the multiples. Uh, uh, you know, the sentiment around this basket is going to continue going forward as well uh, because of various reasons, including your budget proposals, including your elections and so on and so forth. We are cons very, very constructive uh, on both staples and discretionary as well. Uh, apart from that, uh, we are looking at private banks and industrials to an extent as well. Within that, uh, uh, what would be your positioning on autos? Because uh, after last year's massive underperformance, that continued. Uh, and now we are seeing some, some bit of buying. Uh, for example, Maruti is showing some kind of bottom formation. There's some buying visible in escorts, m and uh, two-wheeler stocks like Bajaj Auto showing signs of bottoming out. Uh, uh, any, any picks here? No, see, in, in, in the whole of auto space, I mean, since September, we had seen, you know, uh, pressure on those kind of numbers, partly to do with the liquidity in the system as well. Uh, my sense is basically as the rate cut has, which has happened and further rate cuts if it happens, then uh, the trans, um, uh, translating that into transmission, right, and at the end of the day, the, the borrower needs to have some cheap money and if that happens, then probably we would be looking at, uh, you know, uh, on a constructive basis. But till then, I am not sure whether uh, the monthly numbers would be exciting enough for market to build up the momentum on, on the whole space. So till then, we are just avoiding that. Okay. Uh, Vemo, on the thought on uh, mid caps versus large caps, uh, right now in the portfolio, sort of what's the mix that you'd, you'd want to prefer? And would you look for more bargains considering prices have been beaten down so much in the broader market? So the two things, right? One that as as per our funds, we generally don't into invest into mid caps or small caps. But as an investor, you know, I would probably looking at, uh, you know, would be looking at transferring some amount of my large cap uh, investments to probably largest mid caps uh, post post election. Uh, is is what my strategy would be. Having said that, three to five years from here, in terms of the equity as a view, uh, I'm I'm bullish across the space. Uh, so that is how we would look for. Okay, uh, a question that I've been asking uh, almost everyone now. Uh, what do you think of a stock like TCS or even Infosys for that matter? Tech Mahindra yesterday uh, hit new highs. Uh, HCL Tech has made a strong comeback. Midcap IT has been strong. Uh, you reckon uh, that, you know, that IT would continue to outperform uh, the, the, uh, the Nifty? So two things, again, here in the sense that uh, IT uh, in a volatile environment will always have some amount of preference purely because the quality of the business they have, it is to an extent insulated from the volatility. Two, uh, in a volatile time, you will all generally see uh, the rupee under marginal pressure. Uh, so in anticipation that the business is not deteriorating, is pretty stable, currency also marginally depreciating, and an uh, environment where flight to safety is important, uh, you will see outperformance of tech, you know, tech names uh, happening in a very short period of time. Having said that, we do think that if the global growth is weakening, then uh, this, is, this is the thesis which we need to question. Uh, and we may move from uh, probably a very, uh, from a bullish view to probably a neutral view. Uh, but but uh, all eyes on global growth uh, for this. And finally, uh, you know, Webhav, there is so much hap that's happening within the NBFC slash mutual fund universe. I mean, we've now started seeing rating agencies, agencies actually downgrade paper, like what happened with DHFL yesterday. Um, within uh, NBFCs, what kind of uh, companies are you comfortable with? And on housing finance, what is the view? Sure. In NBFC, we are clear that uh, the universe would be split wide open in the sense that it is, it is going to be men versus the boys, wherein uh, those guys were strong on corporate governance, strong on liability franchise, uh, uh, you know, and, and in the right areas of financing will continue to grow. Having said that, business growth is different and your valuation multiples is like slightly different. Uh, while the business growth might be pretty strong, I don't see any immediate case of uh, those valuation multiples going up. Probably it may come marginally downside as well. 
but for me to get comfortable on the space, I need to see durable liquidity into the system. Uh, and if that happens, then we may, may turn a uh, little positive. But till then, we are again in a word on that. Okay. All right, Weber. We'll uh, wrap it up on that note then for today. Thank you very much for uh, taking out the time and giving us your market call. Uh